Hi, good afternoon, good evening, good morning. This is Chris Petri, and welcome back. We're having a fun time today. We're actually going to talk about a limited palette. Um, you'll probably see that term, uh, limited palette, in uh, watercolor books. Some artists uh, make you... Uh, I know I've seen a number of uh, YouTube videos uh, by other artists. They talk about uh, painting with a limited palette. And um, a lot of uh, the professional um, uh, books that you see out there on the, on the uh, shelves today in libraries and um, online that you can purchase by professional watercolor artists, definitely a limited palette is something that's talked about occasionally here and there. Not so much... Uh, a law uh, or a very prevalent um, topic in a lot of the books, but it is it is touched upon quite a bit here and there. So we're going to talk about it here today. We're going to have fun doing it. We're going to make it and break it down into real simple terms, uh, nothing fancy, just kind of like an idea of it. And then maybe in the next uh, uh, in the next videos, uh, you know, um, coming up on my uh, channel, you'll notice I'll, I'll do a video on actually putting it to use, and we'll we'll do a painting with a limited palette. But for this video in particular, let's just talk about the limited palette, uh, what it is, um, and how we can use it. And, and we'll kind of just demonstrate a little bit of the colors and different fun ideas you can have with it. Um, and you can take it uh, as far as you want to go, as far as um, the way you want to uh, use it in your artwork and in your watercolor paintings. All right, so let's get started here. We'll just kind of do a nice little organized thing here. I like to also, when I... Um, when I'm learning about a new subject and so forth with watercolors, I always like to make little notes and then I stick them in like a binder or a folder. And this way I have them to uh, re refer to in the future. Because sometimes things will come up and I'll say, oh, I remember I wrote that down and I put it in my um, my art folder. So I have a folder, a couple folders. Uh, I have a couple a binder, a uh, three ring binder. Um, uh, binders that I that I sometimes put some of my work in, some of my uh, prints that I print off my printer for, of other artwork and, and photographs and so forth. So um, taking notes is good. It's really uh, a lot of fun with watercolor painting. You can take notes and then this way you, you know your ideas are kind of like um, in a library so you can go back to it and you don't have to relearn it or go and search for it again. You'll, you'll kind of have it with you on hand in your notebook um, or your folder. You keep a little folder or notebook of something like that. So I'll just take a couple, make a couple lines on my paper here and Take a mad. Oh, we'll do a sharpie. Let's see if we can find a sharpie here. Okay, and we'll just put this on the top. If you like to take notes and you like to keep uh, a notebook or journals and things, this is a great and fun thing to do. If not, you don't need to do that as well. You can just kind of keep it to memory, commit it to memory as far as um, maybe just having one. Maybe you can just keep like one notebook and just have a little uh, running. Uh, tab of what um, what n things you're picking up as you're going and learning about watercolor more and more. So you can just jot down little notes in the book and and then sometimes flip around in the book and, and recall back to some things that you might have learned that you um, want to brush up on or so forth. But for this we'll just say limited palette. And um, we'll have that. And so let's let's start out here, and the interesting thing about a limited palette is it's sort of like can help you to um, have a little more um, relaxation when you're painting because you're not maybe trying to search around and find what colors you're going to use in a painting. So if you say to yourself, oh, I'm just going to use like three colors in my painting, then you kind of like, you can just lay out a few colors in your palette. Let's do that. Let's say we're going to use three colors. Um, let's say we're going to use um, a gold color. Let's go raw sienna. And then since we're going to use a gold color for our limited palette, which means we're just going to limit the amount of colors, we're going to use less colors versus using all of these. Gold, a gold, a gold or a yellow color, well, we actually have quite a bit of those uh, color. We have a lot of those colors actually in our palette, so we can 
we can take that gold color in our limited palette, let's say, and then extend it. But for right now, let's just keep it more simple. So let's just say yellow ochre. That's one uh, color. And then we'll take another one and we'll say, let's go with um, green. Sap green. Okay, and then let's take one more color. Let's go with blue. We'll go with a cobalt blue. This is fun. Look at this. We can create incredible paintings with just three colors, really. And we'll, we'll, sh we'll show we'll show we'll show that right now how we're going to do it. Now, now we're really going to have some interesting fun here. We have our three colors we're going to use for our limited palette. But we can actually take this limited palette concept and then just uh, tweak it a little bit to make it even more exciting and more interesting. How do we do that? Gold color. All right, so if we're using a gold color or yellow in our palette, we can go in, take some raw sienna. Raw sienna is very close to yellow ochre, except it's more transparent. Yellow ochre is more opaque, more... Uh, more uh, so here you have raw sienna more uh, transparent you can see through it yellow ochre more opaque you can't really see through it you can kind of see how it's thicker less transparent all right so that's gold well what else we could have a little bit of cadmium yellow we could even extend it a tiny bit more and say Cadmium lemon yellow. So in that range right there we have four different colors. But it's still gold, so it's still yellow. So we can extend and make that limited palette even more exciting, but in a simple way. By just adding these different colors to that yellow color. Green, same thing, sap green. We can add to that sap green Olive green, more opaque. Sap green, more transparent. Olive green, more opaque. And then we can add even further and say a little bit of viridian green. It's a cooler green. Viridian, viridian green. There it is. It's got it's more of a kind of almost like a um, turquoise color. Really beautiful for um, water and uh, just an overall beautiful color. All right, so we've extended our green in our limited palette to add these extra green colors as well. Chromium of oxide, very opaque. We can also add that in there. Blue, uh, we said cobalt blue. Cobalt blues are, you know, like all, all, uh, got an all-purpose blue. You know, uh, cobalt is just kind of really nice blue for pretty much uh, any kind of shadowing if you want to do in your watercolor, sky colors, watercolors, for the water, ocean, lakes, all that kind of good stuff. Um, so cobalt blue, great. And then we can extend that and go with some French ultramarine blue. That, that as well, beautiful blue, darker tonal value with the French ultramarine blue, great for water, ocean, sky colors shadow colors, making darks, rich darks. And we can even extend that more with our cerulean blue. So now we see we're using a limited palette. Yellow, green, blue. And we've extended it, we've extended the idea just to add more colors, as you can see, so that we have more variation when we're painting. Because if we just stuck to three out of the tube colors, let's say cobalt, sap green, and yellow ochre, if we just use those three, if we just use cobalt, sap green, and yellow ochre, that would probably be a little less exciting. Probably a fair amount less exciting in a watercolor painting versus if you add in the other blues that you have in your palette, in this palette here, my palette, you can see that we've extended the exciting colors we can add in to, to, to the limited palette concept 
and it, it works really well. So we'll take a look now on the paper, see how this looks when we paint it onto our watercolor paper. And maybe we'll do a couple, uh, we'll take, uh, we'll make some swatches here. So we'll just take our, we'll do some swatches here. Maybe we'll do three. All right, let's uh, try this out. So we'll go with some yellow ochre. So now we'll and we'll just do a nice swatch here. We'll we'll use some yellow ochre. We rinse our brush as we go and we can dry off our brush a little bit too on some tissue if we want to pick up some water and paint. Then we can go in and some raw sienna. This is going to give us that nice transparent. So that's more transparent than the uh, yellow ochre. Then we can go in, we'll pick up some cadmium yellow. Cadmium lemon yellow. We could even go into some uh, raw umber. Still all in the yellow family, the gold. So we so again limit, limited palette, yellow. We've used all of our yellows in our palette. And I also too always you'll hear me always mention this. Uh, if you want to see my colors of my palette, the brands and the actual colors, the names of the colors, if you just type into YouTube uh, My Palette by Chris Petrie, you'll find my palette that I use and I describe all the colors and the brands and everything for all the details on that. This is a little bit of a reduced palette. I don't have probably every color I have in my normal palette, but this is pretty much most of my colors that I use on an on a ongoing basis. And um, all right, so now we're gonna let's move to the greens. Sap green. So here, what we're looking at is sap green, and then some olive green. Again, al olive green's more opaque. Sap green's more transparent. And then we can also go with some Viridian green, very cool green. And then we can go with some Chromium of Oxide, which is extremely opaque. And there we have it. We have some really a beautiful uh, mixture of green, just different, you know, colors within the green family. And then you can get all that variation, beautiful variation within just that, that, that green color. And then blue. Let's go in, we'll get our cobalt. Then we can some, we'll get some French ultramarine blue.
And then we'll go and pick up some cerulean blue. And a touch of uh, maybe some mineral violet. And then what I what I think here is even if you're using like even we're going to take the idea of limited palette, you can still extend that idea with sometimes a little touch here and there of extending the the color out a little bit so like the mineral violet which is purple you know it it's it's not quite blue it's not quite red it's sort of like that in between red and blue so if we mix it in a little bit with the blue it can give us a little more variation and excitement but it's still going to kind of you know blend in nicely with the blue so you can get a little more um excitement in that blue color family when, when you're doing a limited palette with these three colors. So now we have that. Now we can maybe just do a quick exercise. We'll, we'll do a quick uh, kind of uh, maybe we'll do we'll just do a quick we'll do like a vase maybe here and I guess we'll, we'll just have a little fun, th uh, some flowers here, I'll do... Alright, so here I just did an idea of some flowers. And um, some flower shapes and now let's take the um, limited palette concept and let's let's see what we can do here on this um, just a little composition here so we can go in and grab and this is this is also you might hear me say this occasionally sometimes you can lay out your colors in your um, palette and then you use that as your template so you sort of leave that in your palette like this and then you then you go back in and you can you can use the your palette as like a notepad almost and some olive green And we'll say the light's coming from the right. I'll put a little light, just so I don't forget. There we go, light. Some raw sienna. French ultramarine blue. Some of the shadow area here. A little bluish purple. I'll dry off my brush a little bit on the tissue and we'll work this out. bit of yellow ochre. Sap green. A little bit of 
cobalt blue. And I think here with flowers, it's kind of good when we're painting inside the bouquet area to leave some whites and light going through it. It gives it more of a feel of um, a real bouquet where you have that uh, feel of, um, you know, some light and some air, air space going through the, the bouquet. All right, I'm going to pick up the tempo here. This is just the kind of... Get the idea of our limited palette. A little bit of olive green. A little bit of splashing with some blue and green and now I'm negative shape painting just painting around the flower A little bit of cerulean blue. And then some mineral violet with some blue. Maybe some chromium of oxide. A little cerulean blue. And then we'll just use a, a really nice, um, we'll use a, our needlepoint brush. We'll mix up a little bit of a dark, dark green with a little bit of And a couple little flicks of um, paint just to give us that, those branches, the feel of the branches. Okay, that's our limited palette where we did some flowers and a vase. We didn't get into you know, all the paints in our palette, just a few, the, the yellow, the green, and the blue. And we maybe extended it out a little bit with some additional colors that were in the same families of the three colors. And we, we can do some really fun paintings with a limited palette. So I hope everyone enjoyed this. It's a lot of fun. Try it out. Take some notes, you know, uh, keep a little file for yourself on some different uh, types of limited palettes that you like to use. Maybe try different colors. Um, and see how they work out in your uh, paintings. You can take a different style painting, maybe a landscape, and use, you know, the limited palette idea and concept and w see if you can work it into some landscapes, maybe some streetscapes, some flower paintings, uh, whatever you like to paint. You just try it in, in your style of what you have the most fun in with, with painting and creating your paintings. And and then uh, you'll you'll see that it'll add a new dimension to your, to your artwork. You'll be able to um, control maybe the intensity of your paintings and the way they look. Uh, you can tone down your paintings with a limited palette or you can make them more vibrant and more 
you know, exciting by adding, let's say, all of the colors of the palette um, while you're painting. So it's up to you. You're the artist. Have fun with it. Try it out, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.